thrilled pleasure to be working with eBound Canada on uh, both offering ebook development services for its uh, members, but also being able to do some webinars and help you guys understand where the market's going and what's going on. Uh, so without any further ado, let's kind of jump in and, and talk about EPUB. Obviously, this is a you know this is a webinar that's geared toward the EPUB standard um, and specifically toward EPUB three. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about what EPUB is and what EPUB three is. EPUB is um, first and foremost, it's awesome. Uh, it's very good solid uh, format for ebook development if you're developing ebooks of any kind in your publishing house or if you're uh, an author doing ebook development uh, it's the format that you can go to uh, that that actually has good solid forward capabilities epub is a an open source format which means that basically it's it's not controlled by any one entity uh, the, the international digital publishing forum is a nonprofit organization that maintains the format but it's uh, its membership is very broad uh, including most of the uh, the major ebook retailers and providers and publishers, and so there's a lot of uh, connections. And if you're a publisher and want to get involved in helping maintain the standard, then I would highly recommend that you join the IDPF and and get involved in that and have a say in what's going on with the forward uh, forward progress. Um, you know, EPUB three is the the latest version of the EPUB standard. Uh, it's the one that everyone's trying to move to, uh, whether it's fast or slow. It's uh, kind of adoption rates are kind of all over the place, but uh, it has some great capabilities, and we'll talk about those here in just a moment. Um, but the thing that you run into when you're dealing with EPUB 3 as opposed to EPUB 2 uh, is specifically that EPUB 3 is frustrating, uh, and it's mostly frustrating because of the lack of adoption across the board. Uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about retailers and where they stand and how devices will support the, the features in EPUB 3 in just a moment. But this is the most frustrating thing that a lot of uh, publishers are dealing with: is the question of should I go ahead and try to build EPUB 3 files, or is it better for us to stick with EPUB 2 and not worry about EPUB 3 until things are a little more consistent and you know we have better capabilities on devices and things like that? And that's a really good question. It's a big question. It's one that uh, really has to be thought through. Uh, on an individual level, an individual publisher level, uh, because it's not always going to be the same answer for everybody. But hopefully at the end of this webinar, you'll have a better idea uh, as to what that means. Um, so what what's new in EPUB 3? Uh, let's talk about the things that are different from EPUB 2. Now, EPUB 2 is a very solid format. Uh, it's still being used by the vast majority of uh, publishers and authors in developing their ebook files. EPUB 3 is still not being used by any, any very large number right now uh, of publishers. So the um, the uh, the great thing about this uh, the format is it has some really great features that were not possible before. Um, what's new in EPUB three is first of all XHTML five. Um, XHTML five is a, is the kind of latest format for HTML that's used on the web, uh, and just like EPUB has been for the longest time since the beginning, uh, it's all based on standard web technologies. Um, another feature is that the spine can have HTML files and it can also have SVG files, which means that you can have a full page image that's uh, in a vector gra vector based graphic um, and that can actually be done uh, on the spine of the book, which means you don't have to wrap it inside of an HTML file or some of the other things. And that gives you a little bit of capabilities uh, for XML based vector based images. Uh, EPUB 3 has video and audio support built into the standard. That doesn't mean it will be supported across the board, of course, but um, on every device, but it, it is supported inside the uh, standard itself, which wasn't in EPUB 2. Audio overlays, which is a narration overlay feature, a really great feature for uh, children's books, but also for any other kind of book as well. JavaScript support and scripting of any kind is, is a really important uh, part of the EPUB 3 process and being able to add animations and interactivity to books, whether that's a children's book or you know, a uh, textbook or some other kind of content. Enhanced global language support, which allows for writing directions like right to left and vertical, um, allows for Ruby control. Excuse me, Ruby control. So if you're uh, if you're publishing a book that's in a, a language that's not written in the the Latin character set, this is a really important feature of EPUB three and a very important direction for us to be going uh, as a publishing community and ebook ebook publishing community. MathML support and uh, that you know for for doing textbooks and other books that require mathematical equations, that's a really solid way of doing math instead of having to put all all your equations in images that are you know not very good quality. 
CSS media queries, which allow you to change what a book looks like uh, when it's displayed on different devices, and CSS3 styling with EPUB-specific prefixes, which allows us to go a little bit beyond what is normally done in CSS on the web uh, with some specific features built in to the EPUB3 process, of the development process, specifically for EPUB documents. Uh, so it goes a little bit better than just hey, this is a website, you know, it's, this is a book, and we want to make sure that some of, those, some of the things you have in a book, uh, specifically, they may not show up on a website, uh, that those are provided for in the spec. Now, here's the problem. Of all the things that are new in EPUB 3, the vast majority of them are uh, features that are not required by the, uh, by the EPUB specification to be supported inside every device. So you could have a device that doesn't support most of these new features. And here's, here's kind of what that list is. Um, XHTML5 is kind of a core feature and, and function of the EPUB uh, spec, so that's not going anywhere. And, and having SVG inside the spine is, is supported across the board. But let's say you have an EE screen, uh, a device with an EE screen. Well, you're not going to be able to have video and audio support on that. Uh, audio overlays, JavaScript support, um, even MathML is not really a complete support. It's not required to be an EPUB3 compliant reading engine. Um, for you to have MathML support. So these are the kinds of things that are a little bit frustrating for those of us who build eBooks, uh, whether EPUB 2 or EPUB 3, is, is the lack of support and the varying support across all the different devices. Um, and this is going to be something you run into when you're making your decision on whether to go to EPUB 3 right now, whether to wait until later, whether to do some sort of hybrid approach. Um, you definitely want to consider what's doable, what works on the different devices, uh, and what the retailers can support as well. So let, let's talk about current retailer and device support and give you a general idea of, of what it is that people uh, can do on, you know, what, the, what these files can do on different devices. Now, before I jump into the EPUB supporting devices, I'm going to mention the one that's not mentioned right now, and that's app Amazon. Amazon does not have EPUB 3 support. Uh, matter of fact, the, the Amazon platform is not an EPUB platform. They have their own format. It's Kindle Format 8 or Moby Pocket. Uh, and that format is not EPUB 3, so it's important that you recognize that. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well, but, you know, basically, you know, you're not going to see Amazon in this list because they're not really an EPUB supporting retailer, uh, and their devices don't support the EPUB standard. So let's talk about Apple. Apple is currently uh, the retailer with the best support among all of them for reflowable and fixed layout EPUB 3 files. Uh, but it is closely rivaled by Kobo. Kobo's actually got really good support on some of their devices for EPUB 3 as well. Some of the features in EPUB 3 are supported in iBooks uh, in kind of non-standard ways also. So fixed layout, you can do an EPUB 3 layout file, or you can do an Apple EPUB 2 hacked together kind of e uh, fixed layout file, uh, especially for children's books. Now, be aware, though, that um, Apple is getting a little more picky about this, and they're, they're starting to push people to move to EPUB 3. Uh, for very good reasons, because it just makes things a lot more consistent for them on their side and on the consumer side. Um, and EPUB 3 does give you a couple of uh, features and options inside of, a, say, a children's book especially. Uh, they may not have otherwise inside of the, the platform, uh, the standard fixed layout, you know, what's been around EPUB 2 fixed layout that Apple's had for a long time. Uh, implementation is not always defined in the specification for EPUB 3, so Apple has implemented a couple of things uh, from the EPUB 3 spec as they see fit, and I would recommend that you be careful about doing links inside of footnotes for this re very reason. The EPUB 3 specification doesn't say if you're, you know, if, if you're a reading system like iBooks and you're displaying a, a footnote, how it's supposed to be displayed. All it says is, you know, if you're building an ebook file, mark up a footnote with this code. Um, Apple takes the code and turns it into a pop-up footnote, which is really nice. It actually looks really nice on the screen. Uh, the problem is that if you have a link to, say, another footnote or to a page in the book, uh, those links uh, currently have uh, problems. And we've reported this. We ran into this with a book we created a couple months ago, and we reported it to Apple, and I'm pretty sure they'll get around to fixing it. But just be careful about the implementation of the specification, uh, the EPUB 3 spec, uh, and test your books. Always, it's always good to test your ebooks on every device. Uh, that'll that'll show you if there's a problem, and you know a lot of times it's going to be uh, things that are unique, features that are unique to that specific device. Barnes and Noble does not have any official support for EPUB 3, um, but from what they say, a backwards compatible, reflowable EPUB 3 file is not going to be rejected by their system. So if you do have EPUB 3 files and you're not going overboard on what kind of formats or features you're adding into it. Um, 
this should work fine in the in the Barnes and Noble process, and you can upload it either through their Puppet system or through their uh, their publisher relations system. So I know you guys are up in Canada. You don't really have a lot to say about uh, Barnes and Noble up there, but if you're selling books in Barnes and Noble store, uh, EPUB three is not a problem. Uh, at least nothing not the not backwards compatible, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Kobo uh, does support reflowable and fixed layout uh, eBooks and in the EPUB three format. Uh, it rivals iBooks in functionality in a lot of ways, but there is more diversity across the different devices in the Kobo system. So especially the e-ink screen devices don't have as much support for the different uh, features in EPUB 3. And so it's good to always test and make sure everything works well. But if you give them an EPUB 3 file, they're going to be able to ingest it. Um, there are a couple of things that might happen in that ingestion process, but if you work with the guys over at Kobo, we, we have found them to be very, very responsive. So if you're, if you're having issues for, for any reason with uh, the Kobo process, the ingestion process, uh, you could talk to those guys and they can definitely help you out. And if, you've, if you need contacts there, I'm sure the people at eBound can help you with that, or if necessary, I can as well. Um, but the ARM SDK uh, is still used for display on those e-ink devices, so you do want to test uh, and make sure that the, the devices are actually displaying um, your content the way you expect them to, despite the fact that they're in EPUB 3 and being displayed on the, the Adobe ARM SDK, which does not support EPUB 3 yet. Some key missing parts and the, the reason why Kobo is kind of a little, little bit behind Apple right now uh, in some of its support is that obfuscated fonts are not supported yet. Uh, which means you can't lock down a font file in uh, the EPUB 3 specific uh, way of locking it down, uh, which makes uh, makes it a little difficult if you're using fonts that require that for, for licensing purposes. Uh, scripting is not supported yet, and honestly, I don't know that it will be. It, it probably will be on, on their um, their tablet devices and those kinds of devices, but I, I think it's you know there's a good chance that we're going to have a lot of dif differentiation here on different platforms about scripting because the you know a lot of devices just aren't going to be able to support this you know, JavaScript and those kinds of heavy uh, you know processor heavy features, um, especially if it's a cheaper device or a smaller device. Uh, media overlay highlight styling is not officially supported. I think there are there is some support for it in some of the Kobo. Uh, systems, but you you want to be careful about that. So if you have a children's book and you're doing you know smile file and media overlays uh, and narration overlays for your book, uh, you'll want to test that and make sure it works. Um, but Kobo's actually doing a really good job, and I'm very impressed with how much they support uh, already of the different uh, uh, EPUB three features. Google does support children's fixed layout only, uh, but there are some key missing parts. Uh, no MathML support at all. No scripting support. Uh, smile files are, are problematic. They don't really work in the Google platform. Testing files in the Google platform is very difficult. You know, doing any kind of side loading can be hard to do. Uh, and they're just now getting to a point where they're starting to allow that. Uh, and the distribution is the hardest to do of all the retailers that are out there. We've had a lot of clients who have had major problems trying to get uh, retailers to um, uh, retail and trying to get Google to put their books up into the system, and it's very difficult to do. And some distributors don't want to work with them either. So uh, I would recommend being being careful about that. And, and you know, they don't sell as many books as other retailers, so you might consider skipping them if you have too many problems and it turns into a headache. Uh, Sony is brand new in its support for um, uh, for EPUB 3 and only has minimal support. It's only supported in the Android app right now and not on their uh, devices or uh, in their uh, iPad. Uh, iOS application. Um, and reflowable and fixed layout is supported though. Uh, backwards compatible reflowable files will work in other devices and apps. So if you do decide to go that route of, of selling through through the Sony store, then you can you can definitely have them uh, uh, have them put it up uh, for sale if it's backwards compatible. Um, and I do highly recommend if you get an opportunity, uh, you can go and download the BISG EPUB3 support grid. Uh, which I'll go ahead and pull up here on the screen. I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. It's it's a very large uh, spreadsheet that's available for free on the BISG website, uh, and this is a uh, it, it's a grid that shows you what the different devices from every retailer support inside uh, the EPUB3 specification, and it covers everything. It's got all of the different retailers we talked about so far, uh, plus other ones that you might not have thought about, and a bunch of uh, a bunch of you know, applications and things like that that support in some way or have some level of support for ebook formats. Uh, so, highly recommend that if you get an opportunity to uh, check that out. You can go to tinyurl.com/bisgepub3, and that'll take you to a, a link to the download uh, where you can download that file. 
So it would it would behoove me at this point to tell you guys about the Ridium project. Uh, the Ridium Foundation is a nonprofit organization that is connected in some ways to the IDPF, although it's not directly connected to the IDPF. It's not like a subsidiary company or anything like that. Um, the Ridium Foundation is a uh, it is specifically geared toward the development of the Rydium Display Engine for EPUB files. Um, this foundation was launched back in March, and active development is going on right now of the Rydium Software Development Kit, the SDK, uh, with launchers for iOS, Mac, Android, PC, and the web. Uh, the, the basis of the Rydium Display Engine was a, a plug-in for uh, Google Chrome browser, which you can actually go download for free, and it's, it's a great little plug-in lets you read an EPUB file. Uh, and look at an EPUB 3 file in the Chrome browser. So there's a lot of active development going on. There are a lot of organizations like Firebrand that are involved in, in the foundation, either on a small level or a large level. Uh, and some, you know, like Kobo, are very actively involved in Bluefire, very actively involved in actually developing uh, the software development kit. And if you're part of the foundation, you actually will have access to that SDK when it's completed as well and be able to use it in your commercial venture. So if you're trying to build a, an EPUB3 reading system of some kind or you know, some sort of uh, application to read EPUB files, uh, the Redium SDK is a very good foundation for that. The great thing about the Redium Display Engine is that this is, a, this is an open source project that is geared toward publishers and retailers. It's really specifically for EPUB uh, documents. And if the more, the more retailers that get on board with Redium, and that use the Redium engine in their display, uh, the more consistent across the board we'll have uh, the display and, and uh, characteristics and features of EPUB 3 supported. So we, we really want to make sure that this is, this is a, uh, a key feature, a key uh, functionality that people are, are looking at, especially the retailers and publishers out there who are trying to get their books into the, into the marketplace. So uh, definitely check them out. They're redium.org, which I neglected to put on here for some reason, but uh, redium.org is the foundation's website. You can go check that out, and if you're interested, join with them on that. So let's talk about production of an EPUB 3 file. Um, EPUB 3 is not really that new. It's been around for a long time, but unfortunately the adoption rate has been very slow as we've talked about. And as a result of the, the adoption rate itself being slow on the, on the uh, side of the retailers, uh, we've also seen a very slow adoption of tools to develop an EPUB 3 file. InDesign CS6 Plus, so CS6 and CSCC, uh, I guess is what they're calling the new one, um, do have support for exporting an EPUB 3 file. So if you're building an ebook inside InDesign, you know, taking your print book and converting it to an EPUB, then you should be able to convert that, you know, you can convert it out as an EPUB 3, export it as an EPUB 3 file. Uh, however, it's completely up to your process and your export tagging rules as to how good that export is. Um, if you don't go through the, the process that uh, Adobe recommends of uh, doing export tagging into all of your styles, using paragraph and character styles properly, using the articles panel, all these other features they built in to try to make the export better. If you don't go through that process, then it's going to be a very bad quality export on the other side. Um, there are also a lot of things that it doesn't do yet and things that you know uh, Adobe hasn't really focused very much energy on yet. Uh, for instance, EPUB type attributes are not inserted. So if you have footnotes or you have uh, other features that need to be, that really should be marked uh, semantically and uh, with EPUB type attributes, then those are not going to be inside the code when they get exported. You have to add them by hand. Um, InDesign CC finally supports uh, the, uh, ex exports a linked index, which means if you have an index that is inside of your InDesign document that's actually built by your designer inside InDesign so that it's, uh, it's linked up properly in the, in the InDesign document, that'll actually get exported properly as a linked index, which is great because it'll point to the right location within the within the file instead of just to the page level, you can actually link it, you know, it'll be linked directly to the word or the, the thought or process that you have on that page. Um, and it, it works pretty well. The, the problem is that this is not, uh, this is not something that is marked up with the EPUB3 index markup. So you will have to go in and add the EPUB type attributes yourself. And you know, whenever the features are starting to be being supported by the different uh, retailers, uh, then that'll, that'll actually come in handy. Uh, I will say as well that the EPUB3 index markup code has not been officially uh, added to the EPUB3 spec. It is out there though, and it's a very good markup, and I do highly recommend using it if you can. Um, 
So you will have to make changes to the code. That's really what it comes down to. With an InDesign document, you're not going to be able to create an EPUB 3, a really good EPUB 3 file, um, just from InDesign and, and be able to sell it immediately on the retailers. You're going to have to make some changes to the code and tweak things yourself. And I always recommend that anyway. Make a good quality EPUB file, rip it open, take out the HTML, make some changes, uh, clean it up to, the, to be the way you want it to be, um, rebuild it, and then test it on every device because you want to make sure your book is going to look good no matter where it's being uh, read by the reader. So what about converting an EPUB 2 document? Most publishers who are providing EPUB 3 files are really just changing the container of an EPUB 2 into an EPUB 3. So with a few minor changes, you can make an EPUB 2 into EPUB 3. It's really not that difficult to just kind of change the container of the, of the documents. Um, your HTML5 headers have to be put into documents, which is a small change from what you have in your current EPUB. Uh, EPUB 2 XHTML 1.1 files. Uh, you do have to create a navigation HTML file, which is basically your table of contents and is a replacement for uh, the table of contents NCX file uh, that's used in EPUB 2. Uh, you do have to change the version number in your OPF because now it's version 3.0 and add the properties equals nav uh, attribute to the, uh, to the nav doc manifest item and the properties equals covers image to the uh, cover image and the manifest. Uh, in your OPF, and those those are very small changes. They don't take a lot of time to do. Um, obviously, the the question is whether that's the best practice. Whether that's whether just taking an EPUB two document and converting it to EPUB three as a container is really the best idea. And I don't recommend that. Um, the best practices, the things you really want to do, are using actual semantic HTML markup. Uh, go put in your article section, figure, etc. All these good quality HTML5 tags uh, that are built into HTML5 as a, as a specification itself and built into EPUB3. And you want to use those tags because they, they actually add value to the code uh, in a way that, you, that is, especially when you're dealing with you know, screen reading software or people who are, who are trying to read the, uh, the books that are blind and things like that, you definitely want that accessibility and the, the semantic markup in there. In addition to that, though, you want to go further and use EPUB type attributes for everything. You know, if you've got footnotes, if you've got an index, if you've got you know cover images or other types of images or fig, you know, figures, captions, these kinds of things all have an EPUB type attribute that is a very specific semantic markup that allows the document not just to be read visually by someone, but also to be read by the computer system itself and understood in a structural way, in a functional way by the by the reading system that's displaying that to the reader. Again, as I mentioned earlier about Apple and, and their implementation of uh, footnotes, be careful about implementation issues. If you, if you feel like the implementation of, say, a pop-up footnote in iBooks is not really what you want, then you may have to skip using an EPUB type attribute for footnotes. Uh, but it's, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and I would recommend being very cautious about uh, trying to do it as much as you can. And also accessibility. As a best practice, at a minimum, you need to add alt text to all of your images and make sure that the images are described carefully inside the, uh, the alt text. And there's other things you can do. There's some really good feed, uh, books out there. Uh, there's one from O'Reilly that talks about accessibility in EPUB 3. And I would recommend you know, getting up to speed on what that accessibility looks like and what it would take for you to get your books up to speed in, in the accessibility front as well. Um, so that's all good, great information, I think, about you know, doing best practices. But what about devices that don't support EPUB 3. So you, let's say you wanted to sell your book on the Nook platform, the Barnes & Noble Nook platform, uh, or you want to sell it through Kobo and you want to make sure that it doesn't break whenever it goes onto a Kobo e screen device. Um, so for best results, in addition to the other changes you make to the structure of your EPUB, you want to make sure that you include both the meta tag and the manifest properties that I mentioned for your cover image. So not just properties equals cover dash image on the manifest item, but go ahead and keep the meta tag that's been in EPUB 3 for a long time, EPUB 2 for a long time. Uh, keep that meta tag up in the, in the uh, manifest, or in the, sorry, in the, in the metadata section. Uh, for best results, also you want to include an NCX file, which is you know your EPUB 2 already has an NCX probably, and uh, and in addition to that, the new navigation HTML file, which is where your visual HTML will be, um, and use the proper proper references for both in your OPF. So it's not hard to go ahead and put them both into the document, into your EPUB, and make sure they're both there. And a reading system that like is like a, a an e screen Kobo device is going to be able to fall back on uh, the NCX file and use that if it doesn't understand the nav HTML file. Uh, also, make sure your CSS is properly defined and that nothing's broken in older devices. If you're if you're putting the book onto uh, up for sale in the Kobo system, don't forget that Kobo uses RMSDK, which is the Adobe uh, Display Engine, for a lot of its books. So you want to be really careful about testing it on those devices, making sure that if you have really pretty CSS, 
uh, that is not being broken as a result of the, that CSS not being supported on those older devices or those, those devices that don't have support yet uh, for CSS3. So um, you might want to find ways of doing uh, some good backwards compatibility inside your CSS, which is completely possible as well. Um, watch out for HTML5 tags that may not be understood by older systems. So this may be a case where you have to break down and not use a figure, a figure caption, section, article, those kinds of new HTML5 tags. Uh, or it may be that you can still do it. Uh, if you use good CSS coding techniques and, and apply, you know, apply the right styles inside the CSS, it's, it's a good chance that you're not going to have too many problems with it. Uh, but just testing. Testing everywhere. Test it on the Nook. Test, test it in Adobe Digital Editions. Uh, test it on the Kobo e-ink screen devices. Uh, just do lots of testing. That's really important uh, whenever you're building any kind of ebook. Some key resources that you're going to want to have um, for any kind of ebook development, especially for EPUB 3, go to the Kindle Tools and Information page if you're worried about the Kindle. Um, uh, Amazon.com slash Kindle Publishing has good information about how to, how to build Kindle files. Uh, International Digital Publishing Forum, the IEPF, uh, is a great, great place for information about EPUB 3. Uh, they have the actual specification on their website, so you can take a look there and, and get a, a really good understanding of what it is that, uh, that you can do inside the EPUB 3 format. Uh, and the BISG support group that I mentioned is also available online for free, and I do highly recommend that you download that and take a look at it uh, and use it in your testing when you're trying to figure out uh, what works and what doesn't. Um, just remember, Kindle Format 8 is not EPUB. So if you're trying to build a Kindle file, you can start with an EPUB, and there's a whole process that we can talk about in a future webinar about how to, how to turn that, into a, uh, that EPUB into a good KF8 file. Um, but they do have a lot in common. So because they have a lot in common, you can, you can get from, from EPUB into KF8, even EPUB 3 into KF8, uh, fairly easily, especially for, for very basic books. Uh, so there's a lot of consistency and commonality between the two formats, thankfully. Uh, if you're in the ebook production community, you're building ebooks and trying to uh, trying to keep up with the latest things and what's going on in ebook development. Uh, let me put a little plug in here for our ebook ninjas podcast, uh, ebookninjas.com. You can also subscribe to us you know, on the uh, on iTunes and on Stitcher. Uh, we have a you know, semi weekly, <laughs> I guess. It's a, we do a, we do a, a, web, uh, a podcast there a couple times a month and talk about news and information about what's going on in the ebook world. Also, if you're in ebook production definitely follow the uh, hashtag EPRDCTN, the eProduction hashtag on Twitter, uh, and go to eproduction.org, eprdctn.org, which is our uh, uh, open wiki for talking about ebook production issues. Uh, you'll get a lot of support from people who are building ebooks every day like us and our team and other people out there. So highly recommend those resources. Uh, 